Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about why we shouldn't be banning ChatGPT in the workforce and also in schools and educational institutions. So if you're interested in this topic, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I've had several discussions with people either in banking and finance or in the corporate world about how ChatGPT has been banned in different situations. And I'll give you some examples. So in the corporate world, some companies are actually banning their employees from using ChatGPT in developing emails. And email communication provides a vital role in our professional and our personal lives. Now, with ChatGPT being a large language model, it really just looks at all the data on the internet and the words, uses algorithms, and then outputs a response looking for patterns. It's a natural language model, which is a really valuable tool that can really help and support communication in terms of the grammar, the style, the tone, and ultimately helping people to really articulate their thoughts more clearly. Now, I'm not saying that you should just always use the response from ChatGPT without looking over it and without editing it. It's really important that we check for the facts, that we actually change certain words and, and the meaning. Now, that doesn't mean that we just copy and paste whatever ChatGPT gives out in terms of an output. It's so important that we double check the facts and that we look over to ensure that there's no mistakes and that it's actually accurate and that it also reflects you. So using ChatGPT as a starting point so that you're not starting with a blank page, but it will give you some wonderful ideas in terms of how to communicate in a professional and a personal sense through emails. I think it's really not understanding what ChatGPT is as a large language model, a natural language model, that companies are now starting to ban it. So I think with more education and more knowledge and understanding, I hope that companies will start understanding the power of using ChatGPT for email communication as an example. Now, in terms of schools banning ChatGPT, you know, ChatGPT and any kind of generative AI can be really powerful tools and provide students and teachers with instant feedback on their written work. So students can actually start refining their writing skills and expand their vocabulary and develop a deeper understanding of different language conventions. So as long as we teach them about academic integrity, we can ask our students to actually look at lots of examples of models of good writing and bad writing. And that's how students are going to develop their own critical thinking and, and writing style. Now, I think if we leverage the power of ChatGPT and other large language models, we can really empower our students to become better communicators and equip them with the skills that are really important and valuable for their future endeavors, for future jobs. Now, there's a bit of a misconception out there that ChatGPT actually takes away critical thinking and that students just copy and paste and they're not engaging their intellect. And that is a huge misconception because ChatGPT can actually be used to foster critical thinking and problem solving. We know that an AI generative tool does not is not actually always factually correct. And so students and people have to discern the facts uh, and the truth from falsehoods and alternative facts. And we have to encourage everybody to be able to analyze the output and edit the output and improve the output. Everybody should be encouraged to exercise their own judgment to determine whether this is appropriate, to judge the accuracy, and whether they need to actually modify and change sections of it. Now, instead of banning any kind of generative AI or large language model, you know, we really should be trying to teach everybody, first of all, what it is, because I think there's a misunderstanding of what it is, and also ethical and responsible use. You know, we all need to understand the limitations and the biases that the information on the internet offers, and we need to foster a culture of really responsible use of AI, but not ban it. Use it in an effective way, in an intentional and thoughtful way that takes into consideration academic integrity and ethical use. 
So I'm really hoping that less and less institutions around the world, whether they're corporate or educational, will stop banning the use of AI, especially ChatGPT and other large language models, because it's here to stay. It's only going to get better. And banning a tool does not stop people from actually using it outside of the institution. So thank you so much for joining me this week. And I really hope to see you next time.